Some people think maybe as ships, but ships can sail. To bring the offensive capability to some faraway land, you need the airplanes to get that ordnance on target. And that means jet aircraft that can fly that distance and come back safely. And without long-term recovery, without those catapults, without those recovery systems, that couldn't be done. Wouldn't be done. We would not have naval tactical aviation without long-term recovery. Let's say that now, 55, 60 years since we got serious into, into the business operating aircraft of carriers. I mean, let's face it, we launched the first, first uh, aircraft of the Langley. It's been a while, but those were really baby steps, uh, biplanes uh, weighing a couple of thousand pounds. The airplane weights just grew. I plotted a curve at one time of the aircraft growth from the 40s through the 80s. And it was an asymptotic curve. It just went up like this. And as the airplane weights went up, we needed more energy. At that time, in the early 50s, we were using the hydraulic catapult, the H8 catapult. And the hydraulic catapult was limited because of, of, of the weights of, of, uh, of the aircraft. We tried to develop an H12, even larger catapult. It was developed, but never installed because of several bad events that occurred. On the USS Bennington, the H8 catapult exploded killing sailors. So that showed us that to continue with hydraulic uh, catapults was not the wisest way to go. The Brits, the UK, developed the steam catapult. We saw the benefits of steam catapults. We immediately latched onto it and we got it into our carriers before the Brits even had it operational. And that was the C7 catapult. Testing recovery systems on track one, that was my first job. And often when you uh, were trying to arrest a 60,000 pound dead load, the wire would not hold and the dead load would start tumbling into four dicks. And 5,000 pound weights were flying through the woods in, in the, in the, from Lakers to Dix. Uh, luckily, it was the part of the base that was not populated, but it was still exciting. But that was the beginning, so the recovery systems. Then I had to go in and do my uh, commitment to the Army Corps of Engineers, and I served at Fort Belvoir came back to Lakehurst, and then when I got into catapults. At that time, we were developing a catapult for the enterprise, again, driven by the need for more energy, and we decided to develop the internal combustion catapult. It was a TC-14, and it was 1959, 60 to 63. We tested it, and that catapult had 100 million foot-pounds of energy, able to project it to launch everything, including the current F. F-35 Charlies and F-18s, whatever was coming down the pike. We saw the airplane, the way it's going up. However, naval aviation felt that it was too dangerous to have an explosive mixture on a carrier, manned carrier, under the flight deck. So we stayed with steam, and we stayed with steam for the last 55 years. And we're still staying with steam because the uh, CBN-77, uh, Her George Herbert Walker Bush, will be around for the year 2060. So the Nimitz class will have steam catapults at least through 2060. And the C-13 Mod 2 was developed in the late 70s and early 80s, and we got it installed on the CVN 73. They call it a Fat Cat, C-13 Mod 2. And that system will launch everything projected currently and projected in the future. So we have a system that works, however, the uh, USS Gerald Ford, CBN uh, 78, we decided to go to the uh, electrical uh, capability. And we've developed the electromagnetic uh, launcher, the emails. Why electromagnetic catapult? You get rid of the steam. Each steam catapult shot uses about a heavyweight shot over 1,200 pounds of water which has to be purified and generated on board carriers. You can even impact sailors' ability to, to get showers because it's all eaten up by the catapults. Going electric, it's cleaner, and in addition to, to losing that, all that uh, generated water of a carrier. Why am I still around after 55 years? 
Well, it's, it's really a long story, but I was born in Ukraine. And uh, why did we immigrate west? Because of communism. And we were able to get a visa to come to the States in 49. And I saw so much ugliness as a, as a young boy. I felt that if I can contribute to the strength of this nation and make those launch and recovery systems as robust and as, as good as I can, that's my contribution. If you feel that you're contributing, stay with it. Do the best you can. Make sure that equipment works. That, that's why I'm still here.